Hello, Craig Smith from the Home Education Foundation, Palmerston to North, New Zealand. We were talking about how we as parents can educate our children at home. We can do a first-rate job, parents. No need to send them out to some institution where they're going to get institutionalized. No, you can educate your children at home, and so when they leave your home, they're fully educated. You can do it. A question that sometimes comes up is, how can I build my own library? That's an excellent question. That is so much fun. We talked with one mom one time who was uh, had signed up for a curriculum, a well-known curriculum. It was taking her children systematically through a lot of good material. It was an expensive curriculum and they had to come from overseas and so she was spending the, the purchase price and the cargo to get it to where she lived. And um, we said to her at one point, now you add this up for all your children until they finish. How much is that gross dollar figure going to be? She came up with a dollar figure. And we said, now, can you imagine the library you could buy for your home with that kind of money? Can you imagine the books that you'd have on your shelf, books that at any time of the day or night, you could walk over that bookshelf, grab a book, and think, yes, I'll be happy to read this. This is going to do me good. The vision caught her uh, imagination, and she did exactly that. She kept the money and didn't buy the curriculum, but instead she began to build up a library at home. So what do you do? Well, there's lots of places to start. You'll have your own favorite kind of books that you want to go for. Biographies, histories, um, and just see what there is out there. If you were to Google um, uh, a thousand great books, uh, just do a thousand great books, up will come a co several lists. Now these are lists that, I don't know who came up with them, and these are like books from antiquity or you know, what you might call classical literature, the great books. <clears throat> and there are many books out there in our Western civilization that we would call great books. Now, not all of them are worth reading. I, I, I need to make this clear. Somebody who really helped us with that was um, the Blue Dorns. <clears throat> uh, they wrote a book called um, Trivium, Teaching the Trivium by... Harvey and Lori Blue Dorn. These folks have investigated this whole idea of what constitutes classic literature. For most of us it means something written long ago, probably by the Greeks and the Romans. And it talks all about these, uh, you know, uh, mythologies and these crazy episodes wandering around the globe doing wild things. Well, there's some interesting aspects to that. But now, <clears throat> the Blue Dorns came up with a formula, something along the lines of whatever is of good and lasting value is a classic piece of literature. And a lot of these ancient uh, Greek and Roman mythologies, which are taken as part of the uh, contributing literature that made the Western civilization, the great civilization that it is. Well, some of these uh, literatures are actually quite vile and have themes that are not what you want to expose your children to. So don't be taken by the name of Aristotle or Plato just because it's Aristotle or Plato. Some of the things these guys wrote were just plain vile and defiling. You don't need to read them. And so, um, <clears throat> get some advice on that, perhaps, from somebody in the know. The Blue Dorns are very good. Their book, Trivium, Teaching the Trivium, is very good. But do a thousand great books, or Google another a hundred great books. A hundred good books. And you can get lots of titles. Uh, these are just other people's opinions of what, what, what constitutes a good book to have on your library shelf. Well, 
for, for what my opinion is worth. If your library, your personal library is stuffed full of biographies, you can't go wrong. Biographies are true stories. They give you glimpses into real people's lives and to see what they accomplished with what they did and what they had. And history. Histories are also excellent. You need to have good history. Watch the philosophy of the person writing the history book. I mean, we've, we've had some terrific experiences. We've gotten, like, for example, a biography of Prince John. You know Prince John. He was the one brother of uh, King Richard the Lionheart. And he, he uh, didn't go on the crusade. He stayed at home. And King Richard the Lionheart made Prince John the king while he, in his absence. And of course, Robin Hood sprang up because Prince John was a bit of a scoundrel. Well, it would seem. He was a different guy. That's what the point of my little story was. We've had a couple of books out on Prince John biographies. <coughs> it depends on who's writing the biography. Prince John can come out smelling like a rose, or he can come out stinking like a skunk. Depends on who's writing the biography and what their philosophy is about this guy. So um, it's very interesting. Um, to to sometimes just go ahead and read the biographies and compare and contrast. And that's a lesson in itself. Oh, look at this. Whoever wrote this book had quite a different take on this fellow's life. Try to work out why he had a different take. <coughs> but before you build up uh, or before you uh, put your money on the nose of any one author and buy lots of books, you want to check out that author's perspective. Where are they coming from? What is their world view? It may not be commensurate with your own. History in particular. History is so important to know and understand. And again, the person writing the history um, can really put a spin on things quite dramatically if you're not uh, careful of, of it. You don't just want to read it, just believe everything you read, of course. So, um, um, look into that very carefully, but I would say to build up my own uh, library, I start with biographies. They are brilliant. They're true stories of real people who really lived, and you get to see what they accomplished with, with their personal attributes and with the resources about them and with the what was going on in society, the forces that, that were influencing them. It's just fascinating to see.